today i welcome you to the second documentary of the 95 mountain brigades advance into dhaka to liberate bangladesh so you might have remembered about how the 95 mountain brigade was actually a part of the 101 communication zone the 101 communication zone was under the command of major general gurbak singh gill the 95 mountain brigade was just a part under the command of brigadier hardeep singh clair now this brigade had three infantry battalions the first maratha light infantry under the command of lieutenant colonel bulbul bra which performed exceptionally in the chillamari landings alongside establishing road blocks behind the kamalpur border outpost the 13th rajwif and the 13th guards who attacked the kamalpur border outpost but had unfortunately failed also the 56th mountain regiment which was given to the 95 mountain brigade for exceptional fire support by 76 mm yugoslavian guns as you might have seen in the previous video how the 95 mountain brigade was trying out the defenses of the 31 baluch of the pakistani armed forces in the areas of chillamari and the border outpost of kamalpur the 31 baluch was a part of the pakistani 93 infantry brigade the 93 infantry brigade had two infantry battalions the 33 punjab and the 31 baluch now the 31 baluch was the main target for the 95 mountain brigade to be destroyed and the 31 baluch was under the command of lieutenant colonel sultan ahmed testing out the defenses of the 31 baluch it was found out that the 95 mountain brigade needed the help of the indian air force to break through the kamalpur border outpost with new lessons learned from the war games the new plans for brigadier hardeep singh clair the commander of the 95 mountain brigade to advance all the way to dhaka was calculated like this The first day the D day was to encircle the town of Bakshiganj by marching all the way down south evading the Kamalpur border outpost also on that day the Kamalpur border outpost was to be attacked with all might of the 95 mountain brigade the task on day 2 was to liberate the town of Bakshiganj on D day plus 2 that is on day 3 was to make the first maratha light infantry the main fighting force of the 95 mountain brigade to move cross country down south and all the way up to the brahmaputra river across the brahmaputra river was the town of jamalpur the main garrison of the pakistani 31 baluch also on that day was the task to make the 13 rajputana rifles move across bakshiganj and all the way up to the brahmaputra river on the fourth day the 13 guards was meant to follow the first maratha light infantry as the first maratha light infantry was to cross the brahmaputra river to begin the encirclement of the jamalpur garrison on the fifth and sixth day the first maratha light infantry was to move down south of the jamalpur garrison to, to the south of the town and establish a road block on the jamalpur tunnel road while the 13 guards was tasked to establish road blocks on the jamalpur maiman singh road and cut off the road rail link up to maiman singh the 13 rajputana rifles were still tasked to stay on the other side of the river on the 7th day the entire brigade was tasked to attack the jamalpur garrison the 13 rajputana rifles would cross the river and commence their attack while the first maratha light infantry would keep the jamalpur garrison busy down south while the 13 guards would exert pressure from the jamalpur maiman singh road on the jamalpur garrison also it was clear that the 95 mountain brigade would need another battalion for the encirclement of the jamalpur garrison it was still not clear which battalion would be available on that day on the 7th day of the attack also it was clear that the 95 mountain brigade would need more reinforcements hence the second parachute battalion from the 50th independent parachute brigade would commence their first airborne assault to the north of the pungli bridge this was not only meant to reinforce the 95 mountain brigade but also to cut off the retreating 93 infantry brigade that would be trapped in this encirclement on the 8th and 9th day the town of tangail was meant to be liberated on the 10th to 9th day the advance of the 95 mountain brigade with the second parachute battalion was to advance towards dhaka taking the tangail tur road and on the 11th or 12th day the brigade had planned to contact dhaka there would be some slight changes in the plans but this was the plan of brigadier hardeep singh clair to take dhaka within 12 days on the 3rd of december 1971 still at the brigade concentration area of cheri brigadier hardeep singh clair heard the announcement of prime minister indira gandhi's declaration of war against pakistan he heard it on the radio he was clear with his plans for the attack hence he moved out at 10 pm with two of his battalions crossing the border and entering east pakistan bangladesh the first plan was to encircle the town of bakshiganj the first maratha light infantry established a road block on the bakshiganj sherpur road cutting off the 31 baluch from the 33 punjab of the 93 infantry brigade while the mukti wahini from the 11th sector established a road block on the jamalpur bakshiganj road now 
D Company of First Marathon Light Infantry was at Bakshiganj Sherpur Road. The 13 guards had moved out, but they had attacked the Kamalpur border outpost this time. And this time, their attack was aided by the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force brought down heavy rocket fire and pounded the Kamalpur border outpost. Yet, it was hanging on on the night of 3rd December 1971. The 13 guards were still in the frenzy of the attack, trying to break through. Meanwhile, D Company of the 1st Marital Light Infantry, sitting at the roadblock on the Bakshiganj Sherpur Road, found that a convoy of Pakistani vehicles from Bakshiganj was coming forward. They got their machine guns and rifles set up, and as the convoy came in firing range, they opened fire. Within the frenzy of gunfire, a sniper from the 1st Marital Light Infantry spotted Major Ayub, the garrison commander of Bakshiganj, and shot him dead. Amongst a few from the Pakistani army who was killed in action, Major Ayub was laying down dead there. This convoy of troops later fled towards Bakshiganj, but unfortunately, Sepoy Yashwan Power from the 1st Marital Light Infantry's D Company was killed in action. Next came the 4th of December, Kamalpur garrison was still hanging on. The last pounding by the Indian Air Force was done and Captain Ahsan Malik, the commander of the Kamalpur garrison, had finally surrendered at 6 p.m. to the GOC of the 101 communication zone, Major General Gurbak Singh Gill. Meeting up Major General Gurbak Singh Gill at Kamalpur border outpost, Brigadier Thayer had decided to head towards the positions of D Company of the 1st Maratha Light Infantry to see how the encirclement of Bakshiganj was going on. The 13 guards was to follow suit alongside the 13 Rajviv, but General Gill with Brigadier Thayer had got inside a jeep and was driving forward on the Bakshiganj Kamalpur road heading towards Bakshiganj. Unfortunately, at that time, the jeep went over an anti-tank mine. The jeep had exploded, sending Brigadier Hardev Singh Clare flying out about 30 feet in the air. He landed back down and he was wondering what had happened. He was wondering that maybe from somewhere a Pakistani rocket was fired at them. But at that time, he got up and he noticed the destroyed jeep. He was clear that this had to be an anti-tank mine from the detonation on the ground. And he also saw the first grizzly sight. It was Major General Gurbak Singh Gill and the soles of his feet were blown apart from the explosion. He was wounded, he was bleeding. Another jeep was following them and Brigadier Claire lifted General Gurbak Singh Gill on his shoulder and he managed to drop him down on the jeep. Even he was wondering how he had survived. He was not only alive, he was okay, he was in one piece. And for surviving this accident, he was also taken to the nearest medical center where he was given a painkiller and some sleeping pills. He was also asked if he would like to get promoted and take over the entire division of the 101 communication zone. But he decided to stay in command of his own brigade and keep on with the fighting. But he started seeing the after effects of the blast, though he had survived and he was okay. His body was shivering. Yet, on that day, he went up to see how the encirclement of Bakshiganj was going on. The Pakistanis had tried to break the encirclement of Bakshiganj, but they had failed. On the night of the 5th of December, they had fled towards Jamalpur. The entire Pakistani garrison at Bakshiganj was empty. The 1st Maratha Light Infantry had entered the town and had captured a few Razakars and were also surprised to find two Iranians there. They were two brothers, Khudat and Khan Ali. They had tried to join the Pakistani army in this fight in Bangladesh, but they were forced to do menial works inside the garrison. They were taken as POWs and sent back to the rear. So if you can see, this is the Kamalpur border outpost here, just opposite to Tura in India. This is Bakshiganj garrison. So, decoy of the 1st Maratha Light Infantry establishes the roadblock here, as you can see with the cross signs. These cross signs represent the roadblock established on the Bakshiganj Jamalpur road by the Mukti Bahini of 11th sector. These are under the command of Major Tahir. Now, Bakshiganj Sherpur road cut off, the road towards Jamalpur cut off. And this road only being open, the Bakshiganj Kamalpur road. Here was Captain Ahsan Malik's company holding the Kamalpur garrison. This was subjected to the attack by the Indian Army's 95 Mountain Brigade's 13 guards under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Sodhi. 13 guards, with the help of the Indian Air Force, destroys this border outpost. By the 4th of December, Captain Ahsan Malik surrenders to the GOC of the 101 communication zone. Gen Major General Gurbak Singh Gill. By the 4th of December, this is down. Commander of the 95 Mountain Brigade with the GOC of the 101 Communication Zone was coming down from Kamalpur towards Bakshiganj, from here to here. And while coming down on their jeep, on this road, they have an anti tank mine blast. Here, the GOC of the 101 Communication Zone was injured and was taken back. His legs were blown off. While the commander of the 95 Mountain Brigade decided to keep on with the fight. 
he comes here he sees the defenses of the first Maratha light infantry and the Pakistani company under the command of Major Ayub here sitting here a company from the 31 Baluch they try to come here to break the defenses of D company while they get mowed down here only we have one KIA Sepoy Yashwant power where Major Ayub and some Pakistani soldiers are actually killed in action but they evacuate the Bakshi Ganj garrison by the 5th of December fleeing from here breaking through the gaps in the defenses set up by the Mukti Mahiri. Down here, down south, lays Jamalpur. This entire Bakshi Ganj garrison is liberated. Now, by the 5th of December, Kamalpur is in Indian hands. Bakshi Ganj is in Indian hands. And the 13 guards, after their duty in breaking Kamalpur border outpost, is, is sent here to Bakshi Ganj alongside the 13 Rajdev with the rest of the 1st Martha Light Infantry. The entire 95 Mountain Brigade joins up at Bakshi Ganj. Then the 13th Guards is sent to Sherpur. By the 6th of December, Sherpur is liberated. Next task is to go all the way down south. The fight continues. The next plan was to head towards Jamalpur. So at the end, we wonder what Brigadier Hardev Sinclair will do next. The GOC of the 101 communication is no more in action. What will happen to the division? The 31 Baluch of the Pakistani army had retreated towards Jamalpur. Hence, Brigadier Clare knows that he has to go towards Jamalpur. In the middle comes the Brahmaputra river and he knows he has to cross it. What will happen next? What will happen to the 101 communication zone? And what will happen as Clare decides to take on Jamalpur head on? Keep watching to know more. Thank you for listening.